So let's give Kelly another hand. And the band. Thank you, band. Boy, uh, we are so blessed to have so much great talent in-house. Not only um, are the musicians that come through here, but our, the band that's here every Sunday, the practitioners, the, uh, the, the staff ministers, our assistant minister, our associate minister, the songbirds, the volunteers, the media team. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Yes, um, we've had a little problem with the monitor, so we don't have any slides today, but you know, you're all doing great uh, following along, having the, the words to the music and all of that. And what I know is that the whole point of coming together is to really be in spiritual community with one another, to locate ourselves so that our head and our feet are in the same place at the same time. So I want to say Grand Rising. That is our theme for this year. And Grand Rising, excuse me, <coughs> Grand Rising is actually a, a Caribbean phrase that is said instead of good morning because it's the idea is that you rise into the day. And so we are rising into the year with this wonderful theme. We've been talking about gentleness, giant gentleness, and um, while that topic seems like it didn't have a lot of substance, I think all month we've had some really great opportunities to dive deep with this idea of gentleness and to see how there's a lot of power in being gentle for us to glean. Last week we had Z and Melissa here and they talked about love and they were so gentle in the ways they talked about it. Weren't they great? Yeah, <coughs> it's a lot of fun to have them here. And when we, th when we talk about giant gentleness, it, it does. It feels like a kind of a lackadaisical term when we live in this get-or-done kind of world, right? <laughs> where, you know, it's all about getting her done. I was trying to get her done this morning with the monitors trying to get them to work. Our, our usual uh, media guru isn't here with us today, so it was, you know, it was a little challenging, and I was, you know, trying to pause and be gentle with the process, and, um, you know, when you are trying to get something done, it's, it's tough to slow down, it's tough to pause, it's tough to think that there might be a simpler, easier, gentler way to do things. I, uh, this week, as we look at this idea of gentle, um, gentleness and it's how big it is, I want to use the landscape of nature and the natural world. The natural world is so amazing and all that it does when you think about the power of a stream, right, or a river that moves through rock, it gently moves along the canal wherever it might be uh, making its way and yet it has so much power. Just think of the Grand Canyon. You knew I was going there. <laughs> You know, I was going there. Yeah, the Grand Canyon is amazing. And that is the, the, the product of years and years and years of the gentle flow of water that moved through it. And um, I think about the uh, ice melt, the snow melt, right? How the, the seasons roll through and in the mountains that, uh, you know, whether you're going to Bear Mountain or Mammoth or someplace like that where we get lots of snow and the, when the seasons begin to change, it's the warmth of the seasons that gently and very purposefully melts the snow and the ice so that it can seep into and naturally irrigate Mother Earth, naturally irrigate the planet. It's, a, it's a, you know, when we just look at any natural system and it's amazing how it works um, so organically and yet so powerfully to give us the experiences that we have with, with Mother Nature. We just marked Earth Day last Monday. April 22nd was Earth Day. And so uh, every year we 
we take one day to note the amazing life-giving life force that of this planet that we live on. Think about that. 24 hours. We're just given 24 hours of appreciation for the very thing that sustains us. 24-7. 365 days a year. Uh, this planet that we live on uh, filters the air for us. It um, gives us the uh, nutrients that we need through the soil. It uh, provides sunlight so that the plant life can have photosynthesis. The, the, the natural world is very similar to the human body. It has systems, organic systems that are interdependent upon one another. You know, as I was looking at the comparison, Earth has a respiratory system, it has a digestive system, it has a reproductive system, it has a nervous system, it has an immune system all its own. So do you. So does our human body. It's the, it is the divine pattern of life. The pattern that, uh, that, <coughs> that our bodies operate by and the pattern that the natural world operates by. But, you know, we don't think about the filtering of the air through the natural forest. We don't think about the breath that we take and how that gets filtered through our bodies. We, it's, it's almost like we take it for granted. It just is. And then, you know, we have this life experience in our, with our humanity where we're often um, trying to conquer our natural environment. We're trying to, you know, trying to muscle through instead of understanding the, or, the symbiotic, organic relationship that we have with uh, the planet and with our own bodies. Ernest Holmes writes, and if you're not familiar, Ernest Holmes is the founder of Centers for Spiritual Living and our New Thought Movement, and he writes, there is something about you and me that is cosmic, universal, that stretches over time and space. Let us learn to think better of ourselves. This giant gentleness of the environment, which isn't always super gentle. I don't know. The seasons seem to be more pronounced these days. There seems to be a, a reaction that the planet is having to, um, to how we live on it and how we move through it. And that... Sometimes it's uncomfortable and sometimes it's really challenging, but uh, I think it's important for us to take note and to pay attention. To learn how to listen, just like we need to listen to our bodies, right? You have, a, you have a, an ache or a pain or some kind of situation with your body temple, you're going to call a doctor or a naturopath or whoever you're working with to to maintain these beautiful bodies that we have? Well the, well, the natural world speaks to us in the same way. It, it communicates with, it, with us as, it's, as the seasons move through their practices of reproduction and degeneration and reproduction and those cycles. As we move through the weather that we deal with, the natural world is speaking to us. <coughs> and we need to learn to listen. And when we think about giant gentleness, it is this practice of being present, really being present so that we can respond versus react. It uh, reminds me of a story that was, is told about St. Francis, and the story is commonly told that he, he was asked to tame a wolf in a community. But uh, Lynn... Uh, Lyanda Lynn Haup in her book Roots tells the story a little differently and so I want to share that with you. She shares that Francis was called upon by the mayor so that he could help them with this wolf that was out of control. It was, it was ferocious and of course St. Francis was known as the patron saint of 
animals, a gentle soul who could work with the natural world in such an organic and beautiful and loving way. And so, of course, the mayor went to St. Francis. The wolf had slaughtered livestock and attacked shepherds and even killed a guard who went to control and try to slay her. And so, unlike the traditional telling of this tale, Lyanda says that Francis didn't tame the wolf. Instead, he listened to it. He stood in the wolf's presence, respected the animal's wildness, and began to hear her story as he called her sister. When he returned to the village, he shared that the wolf had been injured and her pack had left. She was just hungry, and when people attacked, she acted out of self-defense. And with this new information, the townsfolk knew how to deal with the wolf. They knew to feed her, and they knew to uh, help her find food, and they could coexist with her without fear. It's a pretty beautiful story about understanding, you know, we, we, we have our fear that comes up when we're in an uncomfortable situation, um, especially with the natural world, if we don't un understand what's going on or don't understand the instincts of the animals that we might be dealing with. And St. Francis models in this story the power of really being present, being an observer, being a witness, and really listening. It's very easy to let our fear uh, control our behavior, right? You know, our fear crops up, something happens that we don't understand, things go awry, and we begin to um, have this uncomfortable experience, and sometimes we can sort of have this knee-jerk response that looks a little bit like being a victim, something like the kingdom one. We talk about the kingdoms of consciousness, you know, where we can step into blame and shame because we don't understand. We want to push something away or we want to be more comfortable. Practitioner April Connor, who created this month's theme, writes, this cosmic giant of gentleness is calling for us to expand our awareness and liberally apply love and compassion to all aspects of our lives. We need to get extraordinarily good at being present with the uncomfortableness and not reacting but instead, listening, the uncomfortableness in our world is here to tell us something. And the planet, like our body, like our ecosystem, like our communication systems, like our relationships, when we have those situations that where we begin to feel uncomfortable when things go awry, it isn't necessarily the time to to react or to act against, but to pause, to slow down, to begin to inquire, why is this happening? What is this here to tell me? We are religious scientists. We move through the world when we practice this philosophy working with our consciousness, working with our thoughts, working with our feelings. Everything is the divine intelligence moving through us. And if we ignore it because we're just busy trying to get something done, if we're just trying to, uh, whatever it is that we micro-focus on, you know, it's the proverbial to-do list at work or at home or the things that we got to get done right away. If we're just marching through life unconscious, we're missing a beautiful opportunity to be present with love. Love as it shows up through the other, and that other could be the natural world, that other could be the animal world, that other could be the people in your, in your life around you. There's a natural inclination when we are uncomfortable to not want to feel that, right? We don't want to feel bad. We want to feel good. We want to feel like we're connecting. We want to do those things that bring us back to that flow. But sometimes it's important for us 
to actually pause and slow down. I had an interaction with a, a colleague about a week ago, and what I thought I was doing was simply providing some more perception and um, instruction. And they took the time, not that day, we actually scheduled some time about a week later to have a conversation about it. And I got to hear how that person perceived that. I got to hear that that person felt disrespected. Now, honestly, it wasn't mine to own, but I was able to be present with her and her feelings and her experience, and we were able to begin to look at communicating in a way that was um, more sustainable for our relationship, that was, that was gentler, right? Because so I understood that you know, there were certain things that this person felt uncomfortable with, and I took the time to greet her, and she greeted me at our level of humanity. So often, when we have these upsets, when we have these challenges in life with other people, we meet people at the level of our upset. And we don't pause long enough to see them at the level of their humanity. And when we talk about giant gentleness, it is that beautiful energy, energetic, if you will, of being present with one another of looking past, you know, we all have our filters that we look at the world through. I got plenty of them. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you. But I certainly have my judgments and my filters and the way that I see things. And when things get, when the dust gets kicked up, when it gets challenging, it's an opportunity to slow down and rather than react. And some of, some of us have these bumper stickers on our cars or wear this on our wrist. It says, respond with love. We respond with love, we can respond with gentleness. And I want to be clear. I'm not talking about putting yourself in harm's way for a toxic person that is not treating you well. I, I'm really talking about those day-to-day -day relationships where person A has a perspective and person C, B has a perspective and we're seeing past each other and the opportunity to slow down and be gentle with one another and to reach a greater understanding is powerful. And as religious scientists, if we are willing to do that, if we're willing to find those practices and those behaviors that allow us to move through the wo world more consciously, not just with other human beings, but with the animal world and with the plant world, if we can be more conscious that everything that we interact with, even the stones have life. Even the rocks have life. And so our, our opportunity as we look at the power of the giant gentleness is to find the power in that pause. It, it, there might, you might feel like you're getting more done in the instant. You might feel like you're powering through and go check that off my box and, you know, off my list and move on to the next thing, it'll come back, even if it doesn't come back. And who here has had a difficult relationship, has moved away from that relationship where there, it wasn't resolved, and then met that person in another human being's body? <laughs> Every one of us have had that experience. The opportunity, when we, when we lean in with consciousness, when we allow ourselves to pause and to really see what's happening in front of what is what is life calling us to do? And if we can respond in love, meaning seeing that person's humanity, seeing that, uh, like the St. Fran Francis story, seeing that, that wolf and wondering what would cause it to behave that way, instead of making our assumptions, we get to be an expression of the divine for the betterment of not only humanity, but the world. And it is a beautiful calling if you choose to accept it. And it is a gentle calling. And don't mistake gentleness for lack of power, because it is a powerful calling. 
kindness, gentleness, mindfulness, being conscious, they all look very passive, but they pack a lot of juice when we move into them intentionally. April also, and, and there's a wonderful uh, quotes this week for this talk of April, the practitioner who put together the whole topic for the month. She writes, we can't use fear and struggle to create a solution. That's what created the scenarios we're currently experiencing. Science of Mind tells us that what we focus on, we get more of. When we use love as our compass, we are led to new possibilities. Love is the answer. Embrace it. Feed it. Rejoice it. Talk about it. Share it. Celebrate it. Remember, love is greater than anything else you might encounter. Let us put our faith and our action in the power of love. Authentic kindness and gentleness. And I use the word authentic. You might need to fake it till you make it sometimes. <laughs> but, but you want to begin to really cultivate and nurture that authentic kindness and gentleness. And when you do that, you can use that as a power to deeply connect with each other. And so I want, I, and, and this can be our calling as a movement of consciousness that we are indeed gentle giants, that we are indeed having an impact on the world by our behavior and the way that we move consciously and mindfully through our relationships, the way we work, walk consciously and mindfully on the planet. And so I want to take you through um, a brief practice on how you can use gentleness in your own life. And so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and get comfortable in your seats. And take a deep breath. And I want you to bring forward a difficult or challenging experience that you've had recently. Something that might have, maybe it was some bad news or something that made you feel a little anxious. And notice the discomfort you're feeling. Notice where you might be feeling it in your body temple, not just your emotions. Perhaps you're feeling a tightness in your gut Maybe your shoulders have started to get tense. Emotionally, perhaps you wanted to withdraw or get away from this experience or not hear about it anymore. But as you take another breath, take a moment to just put the feelings on the shelf, in the imaginary shelf, if you will, put those feelings and emotions to the side. And imagine you are sitting across from whatever is making you uncomfortable, whatever might be causing you anxiety. Just picture it in your imagination. Sit across from it. Be present with it. And I want you to take three deep breaths in this present moment. And then I want you to gently remind yourself that you have survived so many other uncomfortable experiences. And just breathe again.
And then I want you to remember that love is so much bigger than this experience, than this news, than this challenge. And breathe into that again. And now I want you to tell this problem or this news or this situation just how big your love is. And I feel that in your heart as it expands. And then tell this issue that there's always a way forward with love to guide you. Taking another deep breath in this present moment, bringing yourself back to the chair you're sitting in and the room that you're in. And taking one more breath presence knowing and opening your eyes when you're ready and knowing that you can presence yourself like this in a safe space anytime you need to. Anytime you find yourself challenged with whether it be a health issue or another person or some terrible thing on the news about a politician. That's been getting my bl blood pressure up lately. <laughs> but presencing ourselves for a moment and remembering the power of love that lives within you, that radiates through you. Being present and then knowing how to, the word that I used earlier, respond. Knowing how to respond rather than react. That, my friends, is the giantness of gentleness. And that is what we are called to do in a world that wants to get up and run or fight <laughs> or challenge or push back. We are called to be conscious, to practice this philosophy in a way that generates love everywhere we go. You know, it might feel like the instant reaction is a quick fix, but the sustainable truth and power of love is what will carry us through to creating a world that works for everyone, that works for all. And as Ernest so famously said, there is a power in the universe that's greater than you and you can use it. And by presencing yourself, by really presencing yourself with the power of love, it can use you. Thank you very much. So let's do a, a little prayer, an opportunity to center ourselves. Um, I did want to let you know we're going to be doing a little workshop on May 11th, Saturday. That's a Saturday, a Mother's Day weekend here from 10 to 1, where we'll be exploring this thing called spiritual mind treatment through some exercises where you can embody the different steps of our the way we pray. But for now, I'm going to invite you to experience it. And so I open myself completely and authentically to the power and the presence of love. the thing that makes the grass grow. And I know that this power is in everything I experience. It is the very air I breathe. It is the planet we walk on. It is that thing that is unseen in all our relationships. It is love. And it expresses itself by means of each one of us. And so I know as we, as we allow ourselves to open our hearts to be present with this power that is calling us to a new day, 
of calling us to be that thing, that person, that individual, that presence that helps to get us closer to this beautiful vision of a world that works for all. So I know as we connect with this powerful truth, we allow the expression of the one life and the one love to move in as and through us. We know that it, it, it helps us to pause when we get anxious or upset. It reminds us of the power that lives within. And so I claim for each one here as we practice this giant gentleness, as we choose to be the intentional, mindful, conscious human beings who are present with each other, who see the humanity in one another, that there is indeed an upliftment, an upliftment of humanity, even if it's only in our own centers of influence. And it is with gratitude that I recognize the willingness, the power and the presence of each one here within the sound of my voice who is choosing to be conscious in this moment, choosing to be the expression of giant gentleness right here in the world, right now, for it is calling for us. And so we say yes, and we choose in each moment over and over again, for it is not a single choice. It is a choice that we renew with each breath, with, with each word, with each action we take. And so I rejoice. I rejoice in the yes, my own yes, and the yes of all that are within the sound of my voice. And I simply release this to that power. The thing that makes the grass grow is the same thing that beats my heart, is the same thing that helps me to move forward in such beautiful and loving ways. And so I simply let it go. We let it be, for we know it's good and we know it's God. And together we say, and so it is. <laughs>